Today, we're going to be covering 14 tips and tricks you can use in your Google site. My name is Rebecca Simons, and welcome to the Educate community. While Sites is very user-friendly, there are a lot of different ways you can use the tools you've been provided with. If you're interested in a specific tip or trick, each one has been timestamped in the description down below. So let's go ahead and get started. Using tip number one, insert an image without borders by using a text box. When you insert an image in sites, there will always be a border or white space around it because of sites responsive design. Let me show you an example. Let's go to Google Images and we're just going to look for a picture of fall leaves and I'm going to expand it all the way across the page. Now, as you'll see, we have this white border around it. If you want your image to span the entire width of your site without a border, you can use a text box. Begin by inserting your text box, then click on the color palette to change the section background and select your image. I'm going to use the same one so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, when you first see the image, it's pretty small. So click in the text box and press enter until you're happy with how much of the image you can see. You also may wanna remove the readability adjustment. Now notice that my second image doesn't have the same white border that the first image does above. When we go into our site preview, when I switch between the different views, you'll notice that my top picture is being resized because of responsive design while I'm losing part of my image that I placed in the text box. For this reason, I find it best only to use images where it doesn't matter if I lose part of it. I really like to use this option to break up content and typically only use solid colors or patterned images like this leaf picture here. Tip number two, delete the header section and add your custom header as an image instead. I absolutely love a good custom header, but custom headers and responsive design do not play nicely together. Let me demonstrate what I mean. When you click in preview, if you are on, say, a phone view, you'll see that you can barely see any of my custom header. So here's my workaround. I'm going to click in the header section and delete it. Then I'm going to add my custom header as an image. Once you've added your custom headers, you can resize them so they span the entire width of the site. Now, if your header has the same background color as your section, you'll never even know it doesn't span from side to side. If your background color is different than your section color, like this second image, then your header is going to have a white border around it. Now, the real difference comes when you preview your site. I want you to think back to what our header looked like at the beginning. Because this is an image and not a header, it's going to responsively resize no matter which device it's being viewed on. You could even think about using an image carousel as your site header and have it cycle through different pictures in your classroom. Tip number three, use a GIF file to create an animated header. While you can't use videos as a header in Google Sites, you can use GIFs. GIFs are a great way to add some subtle movement to your site. I really like to use the Chrome extension Jiffy to search for GIFs. Another great site is Pexels.com. All photos and videos on Pexels can be downloaded and used for free. Giving credit isn't required, but of course it is appreciated. Now the options that I'm looking at here under Pexels are videos. And while I said that you can't use a video, you can use a tool like Canva to import video footage, then choose to export it as a GIF. Let me demonstrate. I really like this book with this I Believe in Unicorns mug. So I'm going to click download. Then I'm going to go to canva.com and I like the canvas size of a YouTube thumbnail. So I'm just going to create a blank one. Then I'm going to 
bring in my video that I downloaded. I'm going to move it over to the corner and expand it so that it takes up the entire canvas. I'm then going to go to share, download, and I'm going to change my file type to a GIF. This is a short clip, no sound. It's going to take it a minute to download. So while that's working, I'm going to come back over to my site and I'm going to click on change image and I'm going to select my GIF from where I saved it in my Google Drive. Now, as you can see, it's got that slight movement in the background and it adds a nice bit of flair to my site. This particular example is called a cinemagraph. Cinemagraphs are a blend between a video and a photograph. They remind me of Harry Potter pictures come to life. If you're worried about part of your header disappearing because of responsive design, you can always go with the option where you delete the header and add your GIF as an image, pulling it across to where it spans the width of your entire site. Tip number four, use mail to to automatically create an email from a contact button. Have you ever wondered how websites set up that feature where you can click and it automatically opens an addressed email? Well, you can set this up on your site as well. Let's say you want to have a button in your footer that says contact me. In the link, you need to type mail to colon no spaces and your email. When viewers click on the button, an email addressed to you will automatically open. You Instead of a button, you could also hyperlink text or an image to perform this action. Tip number five, make your site interactive with an embedded Padlet wall. We could do an entire session on Padlet and its uses in the classroom, but in case you aren't familiar with it, Padlet is a tool that allows you to create a digital bulletin board, which people can then create posts on. To get my embedded code, I'm going to go to my Padlet page that I've already created. From here, I'm going to click on the More menu, Share Export, then Embed in your blog or website. You don't even have to know what all this HTML code means. All you have to do is click copy. Now I can go back to my site and click on add embedded, embedded code, and press control V to paste. When you click next, it will show you a preview of what your Padlet will look like. Click insert to add your page. Now, one cool thing about Padlet is that when your site is live, students can interact with and add to the Padlet without ever having to leave your class site. You can embed all sorts of things on your site, like social media feeds, appointment schedule booking page, wakelets, and so much more. Tip number six, create custom elements. An easy way to make your site look less like a Google site is by adding custom design elements like custom headers or navigation buttons. You can easily design your navigation buttons in Canva, Google Slides, or drawings. I personally love to design my navigational buttons in Canva. I begin by clicking create a design and then use a custom size. If I'm wanting to design a round website button, I use a canvas size that's 300 pixels by 300 pixels. If I want to design a rectangular button, I use a canvas size of 300 by 100 pixels. If you're interested in learning more about how to design in Canva, I would highly encourage you to check out our make and take video on how to create digital stickers. I'll link the video for you in the description below. The design process behind stickers and navigation buttons is exactly the same. All that's different is the in purpose for your product. When it comes to how your navigation button looks, the sky is the limit. You can design buttons with simply text or you can incorporate an image and text. One quick note before we move on. No matter where you design, it's important to download your buttons as a PNG with a transparent background. 
Having a transparent background is the difference between your buttons looking like this bottom image versus the top with the white square background. In Sites, you're going to upload your images and then you can resize as needed. To make your image a button, click on the image, then click the link. You can link to another page in your site or to an external site. Tip number seven, update your site less frequently by using Google Slides. I like to use slide decks I'm already using in class whenever possible on my site. When you make changes to your deck, these changes are automatically reflected on your site without having to republish. The only change you would need to make is getting in the habit of making sure the most current information is your first slide so viewers aren't having to click through your slides to find the information they need. Here are two different examples of agendas. The first one is one that I did as back to school stations during COVID. All of these links on the site are clickable and students don't ever have to leave unless you link them somewhere external. The second example is from my son's amazing fourth grade teacher who uses a Bitmoji classroom, not only as her agenda, but she also embeds links that students are going to need in class for the day. For example, you'll see here, she has her anchor charts. She's got a video that she wants them to watch. And you also have a section about famous words from FDR with additional videos and images. Um, I absolutely love her work. It is amazing. You also could embed something similar on your site. Not only is this visually appealing, but it has all the resources your students will need in one location, which means less distractions. Number eight, embed an entire folder structure from your drive. Not only can you embed files from your drive, but you can also embed an entire file structure. I was really excited when I discovered this possibility and my mind automatically went to how useful this could be if you were creating a teacher dashboard on Google Sites. I tried it out on my own personal dashboard to give me easy access to the files that I'm in most frequently. Let me demonstrate how this works. To embed a file structure, click on Drive, then locate the file you want to embed. Instead of opening the file, simply select it and click insert. Most people don't notice this feature because they're always looking for a specific file. When you're previewing your website or it's live, clicking on the folders or files will open them in a new window. Tip number nine, make a forced copy of your site. You may have clicked to open a Google Doc or Slide Deck before and been asked, would you like to make a copy? This trick is known as force copy, and there's a similar trick for Google Sites. This strategy is a great solution for teachers who want to provide a site shell so students can add their own content to something like a portfolio. When you give students a template, it allows them to focus on the content instead of aesthetics, which can be a real time saver. Once you have your site set up, you want to delete the page ID. The page ID is everything that starts with P slash going forward. What you're left with is the site ID. Type template preview after the site ID. You can then share the modified URL through Google Classroom or email so students can use your site as a template. Here's what you'll see when you share it. Students can simply click on Use Template to get their own copy. Tip number 10, view your published site in a guest account or in an incognito browsing window to check viewing permissions. Because you are the owner of all the content on your site, sometimes it can be difficult to tell if you have all your viewing permissions set correctly. A quick way to check this is to copy the link to your published site, then click on your Chrome account icon and select guest. This will open up a window that's not connected to your Google account. Paste in your site URL, then go through and check all of your pages. 
For example, as you'll see right here, my living calendar hasn't been set to where everyone has permission to view this file. Now that I know that, I can go find that specific file and update the viewing permissions. Tip number 11, make favicons and logos into different shapes with a transparent background. By default, when you add a logo or favicon, it will upload as a square or rectangle unless it has a transparent background. If you upload your logo as a PNG with a transparent background, your logo can be any shape you want it to be. As you can see here, my Bitmoji has a transparent background, so you're able to see the background around my hands. Let me show you what it looks like when there's no transparent background. My as you can see, there's this white box around my logo and it makes it look a little unpolished. Here's what it looks like with a transparent background. Tip number 12, decrease the amount of spacing between lines. When you're typing in a text box, you can decrease the amount of spacing between your lines by pressing shift enter. For example, here's the amount of spacing when I just hit return. If I delete this and press shift enter, you'll notice that the space between my lines has decreased. Shift enter will also allow you to add multiple points to one bullet. When I simply press enter, it will create a new bullet point. This works for a numbered list as well. Tip number 13, show only a specific portion of a YouTube video. When you embed a YouTube video in Google Sites, you don't have an option to control where you want your video to start and end. A workaround for this is to use Google Slides. Begin by creating a new slide deck. I like to change the page setup to a 4-3 ratio. Then go to Insert Video and paste in the shareable link for your YouTube video. Then expand your video to take up the entire slide. Under Format Options and the drop-down Video Playback, you'll see the option to choose where to start and end your video at. For example, maybe I only want to play the first five minutes of this video. Make sure to click on Share and change your sharing permissions to anyone with the link is a viewer. Then head back over to Sites and insert your slide deck. You can play with the sizing and adjust it until you're happy with how it looks. I personally like to expand my video until it doesn't have the black border around the edges. If I were to click play on this video when my site was live, it would start at the beginning and play all the way up until five minutes, which is where I set the ending time. Tip number 14, quickly copy headers. Sites allows you to have a different header for each page. If you want to use an existing header on a new page, make sure you're on the page that has the header you want to use, then create your new page. For example, if I create my new page from here, it will have welcome to our class. If I were to go to a page with a different header and click new page, it would create the page with the Welcome to Miss Simons class header. Thanks for joining the Educate community today. If you're interested in more tips and tutorials on all things EdTech, be sure to head over to our channel. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified each time we post new content. See you next time.